the open in 1985 on the grounds that it was a vital part of America's cultural heritage. Sideshows by the seashore is run by another big CeeLo fan, Dick Zegan. A lot of the legends of sideshows were on this stage. Obviously, CeeLo, you know, if you want to know about CeeLo, this is what it was like, this room, this echo. Yeah. This is where he spoke, this is where he performed. But not only CeeLo, the mule Face boy has been here, and Jack Dracula, the tattooed man. What are you here for today? You knocked on my door. You, obviously, you had heard about this place. Yeah, yeah. What are you looking for? I'm trying to find out what it really feels like and what it really meant. So, I mean, trying is such a vague word. I mean, you should or get off the pot, right? Uh, yeah. Michael Wilson walked in the door with his face all tattooed, and he got a job in 15 minutes, like that. Jennifer Miller, the bearded lady, I saw her once, and I just, you know, issued her the challenge, get on our stage and work in the show. This is the place. If you're going to do it, if you're going to be CeeLo, this is where you be CeeLo, right here. OK. Uh if, you, yeah, if you're genuine, I, I, I would quite like to try. Yeah, so I issued the challenge. You tell me when in the summer you want to work for a week or want to work for a whole summer. What would I do? You can play it as if you're CeeLo and this is the 1950s and like get into his whole persona. Talk to some of the other performers. Find out what they did here. OK. OK, I will. Excellent. Great. Yeah. You got the job. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Ziggin came out to me on the boardwalk and said, we're looking for a woman with a beard to perform. You know, and I said, OK, I'll, I'll give it a whirl. And I worked for two days that year. But I came back the next year. And that's 10 shows a day. Yes. That's hard graft, isn't it? That is such hard work. That is such grueling work. Because I'm going to go and do it, you see. Good luck. Oh, well, <laughs> what I was hoping for, Jennifer, was a bit of advice, basically, from oh, what I feel fabulous. like is kind of kindred spirit thing here. You yeah. Know? It's deep. It's deep work. It's really exciting work. For me, it was incredible work. I did it for five or six seasons God. over the course of seven years. So I, 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 I think when I first went, and here's, you know, my, it wouldn't be advice, but as a sort of watch out for, I think I was in your situation. Yeah. I, I wanted to check it out. Traditionally, the sideshow or the freak show is built around, I may look like this, but I'm normal. I have a normal life, and then a list of things to prove it. Nonetheless, don't most people still see you as a freak, though? I don't feel like a freak. You don't look like one to me, either. Thank you, no. I guess. Yeah. But then I, I guess other people watching this program might argue with us, you know. It's hard they to might say. say, she's a freak, he's a freak. Yeah. You, you have to, like, let them know that you know, you know? I know I have these short arms and whatever. Yeah. If you if you whatever it, they'll whatever it. You know, yeah. let's get on to the important stuff. To get to the important stuff, I needed to figure out what I was going to do on stage. Jennifer told me about a man who's a legend in sideshow history. He spent his childhood sleeping under the boardwalk here in Coney Island, where he learned to be a talker, the guy who hypes up the freak acts to attract a crowd. I finally traced him to this traveling museum. The exaggerated banners outside were the only evidence of his former glory, but he had been CeeLo's talker for many years, and that's why I needed to meet him. His name is Bobby Reynolds. Who is it? It's Matt Fraser. Yes. Bobby Reynolds? Yeah, hello, hello. Hi there. CeeLo. <laughs> How are you doing, young man? Okay. You're looking good. You're and looking you. Good. Pleased to meet you. I've tracked Please. you down finally. You tracked me down finally. Well, yeah. that's nice. You look at, let's go into the tent, kid. Oh, OK. So what was CeeLo like as a man? He was a friend. He was a, he was a buddy. I, I liked CeeLo. Would you actually do the talk that you used to do for CeeLo's act? OK. You're going to see CeeLo, the seal boy. Here's a young man with little flippers like a seal. On the inside, you'll see him work. He'll amuse and entertain you. And when you come out of here, you'll look up and thank your creator above that you were born normal. That's the primarily. Did he come in and yeah, Cielo would do his act? What he, was his act? Well, he would he would take he would take and he could shave. You know, he shaved about forty times a day. No wonder he had his face was chapped. And he'd have a lather and this, and then he'd put the thing up like this and like this, and then he'd show us, and then he'd autograph pictures. You know, he he had the postcards and he'd get down here and he'd autograph them. And he was quite a guy, and uh, you know, and he. And hey, my name is CeeLo, and he'd go through the whole gyration. He was really a character. 
Did he, um, how can I put this? Enjoy the company of women? Oh, he got laid a lot. Oh, yeah? Am I supposed to say lay yeah, a lot? Yeah, yeah, say it, say it. Sure. Yeah, he, he got scored a lot. We, 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 he, he was okay. Was there a sense of community in the show, people? I mean, like, in the outside world, it might not have been such great treatment for them a few years back. Did they find it comforting to be oh, well, in a family we, we were, treated We equal? were a family. We never really looked at anybody that had a mutation. We, we, we were family, you know. Your arms are shorter than mine. What the hell's the difference? Who yeah. cares? Yeah. Just do your act, grab the money, and get the hell out of here. That's it. <laughs> Freaks, wonders, and curiosities, a panorama of the strange, the weird, the odd, the bizarre, and, the, and you'll be a star, kid. Okay. I was being schmoozed like never before. Everyone wanted me as their freak. I was beginning to feel like a commodity, kind of like the girl with the biggest boobs in the strip show. But commodity or not, here was my chance to get close to the old freak show experience. I was going to do CeeLo's routine. And in the best acting tradition, I researched my part and got into character. CeeLo the Seal Boy was, by all accounts, a happy-go-lucky bon viveur who enjoyed his life, his job, his cigars, whiskey, and wild, wild women. He loved cracking corny jokes, which he called his sealoisms, and he often made references to his hands, which he called handsies. I was getting ready to recreate an act that had shocked and amazed audiences for decades. What brought me down to earth was that I was going to do 14 performances a day. Lady, and this guy here, the star of the show today, Steelo the Steel Boy. He is built exactly the same as a turn of the century freak that performed right here in this very building when it was a sideshow a hundred years ago. And this his recreation, Seal Old the Seal Boy, and he's gonna put on a fantastic live act for you. Showtime! On the inside. And all you gotta do to get in on this kid's ticket deal is follow these fabulous freaks right on in. The show is about to begin. Some folks say my mom must have been a real bad sinner to make me like this. But I say I'm grateful to my mom and the good Lord above for giving me these handsies so as to make a decent living. So let's all show our appreciation to God, ladies and gentlemen, for giving us the lives we have. Oh. 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 Folks, you may not believe it when I tell you I can do pretty much anything that you can. So I have prepared a couple of demonstrations for your entertainment and amazement. See, my little handsies can manage the day-to-day -day activities that any man needs to do, like shaving here. In fact, I bet I could beat most men here tonight if there was a competition. <laughs> Thank you, folks. Thank you. I got pictures of me doing all the activities from today's show and more besides. And before you ask, ma'am, no, I don't got no pictures like that. Now, that's my ablutions done, so now it's time for me to do some man's work. How am I doing? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Please welcome up to the stage, Serpentina. I'm enjoying playing CeeLo on stage, but in between performances, I have to come out onto what is known as the ballet platform. I have to literally make an exhibition of myself. Uh -huh. <sighs> okay, so the ballet platform is, is shit. <laughs> it's not much fun at all, I have to say. <laughs> Doing that uh, just to attract the punters in. There is no powerful dynamic there. It's just, come look at the freak and come inside. It's not much fun. I mean, it's an experience, it's character forming, but it's not fun.
I came, I soared, I conquered. The sideshow had record takings with a real born freak in it. But by the end of the evening, I was wondering, why were the punters clapping? Because I could saw a piece of wood? Seven a.m. on the Sunday. I don't even know what to make of that Coney Island thing. It was exhilarating and distressing. Perhaps that is the freak show experience. But it made me want to meet a disabled performer that's not part of that scene. And I heard about a woman that's trying to break into the mainstream as a musician, someone with plenty of ambition. liked country music? Yes, I have. Yeah, well, who's your, who's, what's your favorite kind of style? Uh, sort of, well, I like the new and the old. I like to do a little of each. Okay, tell me about your fans. What do you think they think? I think they, well, if they like me, they like me. If they don't, I guess they won't buy the album or the tape. So you've never been booed off stage then? Oh, no, I have never been booed no, off stage. I was only joking, of course, I'm no, sure. No, I've never have. Yeah, I no, have. No egg dad or... Whatever they... No, I'm sure you haven't. Um, <laughs> if I could just ask you, Laurie, um, how do you feel when you're, like, on the stage? Oh, I, I'm just another fan that's there, really. Uh -huh. And the only difference is that I'm on the stage, but I'm still just a fan, and I do nothing else. You know, that you sit at a table, and the fans come up in a line, and they have your picture taken with you or whatever, mm. and nobody has ever asked her about this. Right. Nobody has ever asked her about the conjoined aspect. All they talk to her about is her singing, where she's going to be, like she said, and uh, when's the album going to be out, and who's going to be selling it, and uh, what, you know, sure. stuff like that. Okay. Reba, how do you feel about that, that aspect? Do you ever worry that people are coming to see your shows not to listen to Reba the singer, but to see the conjoined Chappelle sisters? Absolutely not. I don't worry about what if they're going to come just for the conjoined aspect. That's not even on my mind. My mind is, oh, I hope this performance goes well and the audience is happy. That's my thoughts. That's my worries. That's it. So let's get this straight. On this program, I've been checking out different performers with disabilities, and that does involve people who work in circus, sideshows, freak shows, if you like. W would, you, would you ever consider doing any kind of work like that? Absolutely not, no. I wouldn't do circus stuff. I wouldn't do sideshows. And one other thing I would not do, they could pay me like a gazillion bucks and there would be no nudity. No nudity? None. Do you think that's indecent? That's indecent to me, yes. OK, cool. I don't tell anyone else what to do. That's right. But if it's not right for me, I won't do it. Mm. And you'd stick purely to country? I yeah? would stick purely to country, yes. Okay. It's your love. Yes. I must admit that it's been fun, but that's no reason to jump the gun. If this is real, time will tell. So let me bite my tongue and remind my. I had self-belief until I met Reba Chappelle. 
But from personal experience, I know the music industry can be a vicious place, and I wish her luck. Look what it's done to this guy. God bless the Chappelles, and God bless America. Showtime at the World of Wonder. The glory days of the great American sideshow are over. But at least I got to act the role of CeeLo, and I reckon it brought me close to the old freak show experience. But it also shocked me that all I was doing was showing that I can do simple things like shaving. I wonder whether appealing to the audience to see them as normal ever bothered CeeLo and the other freaks. Maybe it's just me. One thing's for sure, the experience certainly left its mark on me. Well, I want to try and bring that thing into a theatre piece to see whether a, a theatre audience appreciates it. I've written a play with two characters in it. One is CeeLo and the other one is Tam, a modern disabled actor struggling to be seen as more than a freak. I've got both of these characters up at the Edinburgh Fringe and I've called the play Seal Boy Freak. I've posed topless for the poster. Reva Chappelle would be appalled. <laughs> the Edinburgh Fringe is a freak show in itself. People posing as statues, car crash victims, horses, it's all there. This is the perfect place for my show. Radical subversive theatre. Radical and subversive theatre. The trouble with CeeLo for a theatre audience is that he's a museum piece from a past they think of as cruel and crude, which they are not responsible for. That's why I'm introducing my alter ego, Tam the actor. Folks, I hope you have enjoyed my act. Don't forget to buy plenty of cards on the way out, but please stay for the rest of the show. Tam's a modern character, so they're more likely to identify with him. Good night, folks. About to do an audition. <laughs> I got it through my agent to get me to meet loads of different casting directors. So it's a bit of a pressure gig for both of us. 20 years ago, I wouldn't even be standing here. A professional audition scenario and me a disabled actor. 30 years ago, most directors didn't even know that there were any disabled actors. There probably weren't that many. No role models. With most people too, what? Scared, complacent, unimaginative to cast us. And anyone who does have a real vision of drama that includes us lot, hailed as either a visionary, a revolutionary genius, exciting and confrontational, or a manipulative sensationalist, cruelly exploiting the freakish value of actual disabled people on the stage, inappropriately cheapening the production, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Both CeeLo and Tam have the same problem. People only see them as disabled. They're even alien to me if the audience can understand that parallel, they might just see the similarity between themselves and a freak show audience of old. As I move and speak deeply into my audition piece, might he or she be thinking, hmm, I wonder if he can dress himself. <laughs> Clearly, I have no way of knowing. So once again, I'll just get ready to do my best in the old lion's den. So how do I, uh, never mind. Look, I've just been talking to the casting director, Roger. He said you did a great audition piece, and he was really impressed with your confidence in what must have been a difficult situation. But, well, the bottom line is, you didn't get it. Gotta go. Bye! I read this book once that said that the mainstream will only see a disabled performer in the same way that they view a performing seal. Very clever, but just mimicry. No. No, it can't be like that anymore. We've all moved on. People are no longer more fascinated by how I do things rather than what I'm saying. I am an actor, not a fucking freak. If you go along to see 
a show like Matt's, it's because you think of yourself as a, you know, enlightened liberal um, and very far removed from the people who would go along to court at a freak show 50 years ago. But you can't help yourself uh, as he's performing on the stage because all the focus is on him. Um, you find yourself thinking, well, look at that, he can dress himself. Or, uh, you know, and he, then he's got this line in the play where he says, you know, thank goodness a modern audience 